you're in Austin, Texas, fastest growing city in the country. And then you've got companies moving in, large tech companies. There's a spotlight on Austin right now. What's that like as a designer designing in Austin? It, it's pretty amazing. It's seeing the process of the skyline even changing. I call it our big little city because it, it is one of those cities that I feel like I can go anywhere by myself. If I was going to meet somebody for happy hour or they weren't there for you know 30 minutes, I would still go to that place and be by myself and run into like 10 different people I knew. I was up last night thinking about thinking about like everything you've overcome in the last <laughs> 10 years. Or yeah, you can say overcome things that transformed you. I mean, beat cancer, um, Bo, right? You become yeah. a mother when you weren't even sure you could, mm -hmm. right? And then you almost lose your son. Mm -hmm. I guess with Bo, like it's one of those things that we, um, we knew we would be happy even if we didn't have any kids because we have a lot of nieces and nephews, we have godchildren. When you guys go to the basketball game, you'll see we have so much love from um, from players and, and kids. Um, so we we got to the point where we we're like, okay, if we have a kid, we have a kid. If we don't, we don't, we'll, we're gonna be happy. We love each other anyways. And so when we found out we were pregnant, like it was just, I mean, it was mind blowing. I made a comment, I can't remember who I was talking to about it, but you know, I'm like, well, I haven't been through anything. And then they're like, well, no, you've been through plenty. <laughs> Cause um, sometimes I just, I just keep going. Like I don't dwell in that past, but right. it does help shape what, like who I am like here right now. And then just this past year, 2020, yeah, oh, gosh, the yeah. self-discovery in terms of understanding your place in racial justice, equity, I mean, I don't know what else, you, <laughs> what more transformation you can sustain or go through. And I remember specifically you saying, you know, like, Doug, I really hope this isn't just a flash in the pan. Mm -hmm. Like, I really hope that the movement towards uh, equity and inclusion is truly a movement. When you start to think about diversity in design and then well, why am I an interior designer? Like how, if I didn't see anybody who looked like me, like why did I become a designer? Well, my dad was in outside sales and so he sold building supplies. So I grew up with like sheetrock and like studs and things like as samples and playing with them. And, um, and then going um, and driving around if he had to do claim calls or anything, seeing that, you know, he was like, his product was on that home and that I could be part of that building and process. As a designer, I, I do hope that people realize that we're we're a legit profession. Like, and I feel like that doesn't that doesn't have to do with the color of your skin. Or, I believe that once people realize that you can go to college for interior design, that you can become a licensed designer, that you know you work in spaces that are the healthcare spaces, and I feel like then that might help with the diversity part. So if we can continue to let parents know that whenever their, you know, little brown girl comes home and says, I want to be an interior designer, that their mom's like, well, you want to be on HDTV? It's like, no, no, <laughs> I can go to college and I can do all these other things. And so I think that's part of it too. It's like always advocating for what we do. Um, so that's that's one of the big things that I'm I'm hoping for our industry is that we can continue to advocate for what we do. When you were talking about your parents growing up and your grandparents building this house, owning this land mm -hmm. on the black side of town, mm -hmm. um, there was something that I thought I was hearing for the first time when you were talking about the intentionality behind some of the segregation. Oh, yeah. And when you don't, you don't think about that, but like, wow, the role that architecture and design actually oh, played yeah. in this, right? It's like, whoa, you know, nobody really speaks about that. But that really piqued my interest in terms of just like, man, there's a whole there's a whole story there that's really not being told that oh, I mean, gosh, is Doug, a shameful story. Right? You're giving me the chills because I'm glad you brought this up because I really didn't, I didn't know how we would discuss it. And like, so, you know, we were designers, so we could see it that way. 
But yes, design has played a role in thinking, like when I watch a documentary and I see, you know, the colored restrooms or the colored water fountains, my thought is a designer had to think about that. They had to, they had to physically draw separation of people based on the color of somebody's skin on a set of blueprints and putting that together and like the thought process of being, I mean, some of those designers are probably still alive or architects are still around and alive. Like that, that's a part, my mom was part of that where she knew that, you know, she couldn't go into the department store through the front door, so. Yeah, that is, that, that is a whole world out there that is just shocking. Tell me what is the most rewarding part of your career as, as a designer? I think um, the most rewarding part is like, is, is creating, but then also like being able to um, inspire other people when they walk into the space or make them feel like a certain way. So it's, I, again, it's all about the human connection. And um, I think having people come into your space and knowing that they're gonna be taken care of is is important to me. So. I'm, in, I'm inspired by the users and the people that are actually physically using the space because if it can be pretty, but it can be uncomfortable. <laughs> it can be pretty, but it can't be functional. Um, so I think that that's why I love what, what I do. And honestly, the, the reason I'm a designer is because I like people. Um, and it's team. I, can al I always say I can tell somebody who's played a team sport when we're working in the design space. Um, so I'm working with contractors, I'm working with architects, I'm working with lighting consultants, I'm working with my flooring reps or installers, I'm working with my furniture dealers. So there's a lot of different players and it's not just, there's no I in team. You are working with all these different consultants and team members to come together to create a space. And, and that's the beauty of it, it's never, when you see something, you think about all those different players and how they communicated to, to execute it. I just love that quote, you know, I went into design because I like people. We're not always designing the Taj Mahals or the things that are in the interior design magazines. Like I have to remember that too, as me as a, and I say simple designer, but a functional designer is okay and that's enough. And it's enough because it helps people with their spaces. So those are things I have to remember. <laughs>